Everybody, uh, this is Dominic Pinter. I'm APM Product Manager, and today in this educational video, uh, we will focus on uh, installation of our next platform uh, of next gen uh, APM. The installation is part of something what we call DX uh, platform, which you can see here in the documentation. And uh, it's uh, and this entire platform uh, contains not just APM, but also part, uh, other parts of our AIOps uh, portfolio. Before we start with the installation itself, uh, we will first uh, go quickly uh, through the documentation because I want to show you some of the things to take care of and some of the considerations which uh, you should uh, have before you actually start the, the installation. First of all, the entire installation uh, is uh, based on top of Kubernetes or OpenShift uh, platform. Uh, we changed our architecture in the way that it's container-based platform and as I said, it could be orchestrated by Kubernetes or by uh, OpenShift. And uh, we are then deploying really the services into uh, one of these platforms. We can simply divide that to the application layer, the Elasticsearch uh, layer. Before you start with the actual um, installation, you should definitely check out the sizing uh, recommendations. And here we have actually a couple examples in how you can uh, size the software uh, that's over here. So this is really, you know, just uh, some of the examples, but feel free to work with our team to uh, request uh, information on the on the sizing. The other thing uh, which you should definitely focus on is hardware and software requirements. Here we are stating uh, what kind of uh, software also you would need and that we have, for example, dependency on external NFS server, that uh, you need to deploy a certain hardware for the Elasticsearch, uh, what is the recommended throughput, and so on, versions of the operating systems, versions of the OpenShift Kubernetes. And then here in the pre-installation uh, task, you will find there uh, other information, what you need to do, that you need to have Kubernetes or OpenShift already done, private registry needs to be there, and so on. Uh, before the installation is really this pre-installation checklist where you should check that everything is, is configured and everything is running correctly. Once you're done with this uh, process, um, then the installation is going to be uh, pretty, pretty easy and uh, smooth for you. So, uh, first of all, when we go uh, to here to this uh, run the installer section, uh, let me tell you a couple of things. First of all, uh, you can uh, do two types of installations. You can do offline and on uh, online installation. Um, the online installation will actually download images from the external repository on the internet at the time of the install. So if your machine is um, connected to the internet, you have a connectivity, uh, this is the recommended uh, solution. But we know that uh, many customers uh, don't have that. So therefore, you can also download the entire repository and, and uh, all the packages before the installation. The, the file uh, is around 20 gigabytes. The download time can be a little bit longer. But uh, then actually you have everything that you need for the installation and you can proceed with the offline install. This is what I will perform today. And the other thing is that actually you can do either interactive console install or you can do the silent uh, install uh, non-interactive. Um, I will do the interactive console, uh, console install. First of all, what we do is that we will run the uh, validation. So here I do have a version. Um, it's actually 19.4 version, which is the early access uh, version, uh, which we made available um, for selected customers. And I simply 
uh, paste here this command and now you can see that offline mount is detected and now I will uh, get questions for uh, for the namespace and for some of the input parameters which installer needs to have. They are all described here uh, in the documentation, but I'll show you um, I'll show you actually uh, how to get it done. So at this point, um, we are asked for the registry installation. We go for number one, which is the install the new one um, because the registry is actually not available uh, on this server so far but this option is going to be removed uh, for the GA version because if you don't have actually uh, access to the internet and using offline installer you can not also download and, and install a registry from the uh, from the internet so in that case, you um, you have um, installation of the registry as part of the prerequisites. So let me go with number one. Now I'm being asked uh, for specification of the wildcard URL, which is my rotor URL. Uh, this is correct. And uh, uh, I should specify also the NFS server. Also the NS NFS server is correct. And last thing is to specify the uh, NFS folder. Again, uh, the default for me is the valid value. You can override that, of course, for anything else. And the very last thing um, is that uh, in my environment, uh, we, uh, or the installation detected uh, that uh, there is just a single node, and in that case, uh, it's just a small kind of POC uh, installation that in that case only one elastic search uh, hot node installed and the question is now whether I want to enable operational intelligence in the installation. As I told you, the installer is really built for the entire platform, not really for just a, just a small fraction of, of the platform, uh, so not for APM specifically, but really just for the platform in this case i will say no i don't want to enable uh, why and then uh, i can define at this moment smtp uh, i will press s to skip that and now the console uh, or the installer got from me all the input parameters. At this moment, I could go and really install the software in the silent mode because the installer has everything what it needs in order to start the installation. So you really need to just specify uh, these input parameters and then you can just uh, run the install. But in my case, I have decided to go for the interactive uh, installation. So here I will run basically the same command but without the validate and the beginning will be very similar. Here uh, you can see the license agreement you can of course see the license agreement uh, on the website so you don't have to read it there but you have the choice also like to read it there um, I accept the license and you can see that actually it's older located uh, in the um, in the installer directory so you can also read that offline okay uh, let's proceed and now I can basically do the same, uh, same, uh, same steps. I will be asked the same questions. The reason why we run uh, the validate is that in case that something is missing, this is really kind of like a prerequisite uh, checks um, procedure. So in case that, for example, you forgot for the uh, NFS server, you will, uh, you know, find that you don't have the answer uh, for this 
or that you forgot uh, install registry. Okay, so uh, let's proceed. Don't go with number one here, uh, since all the number, uh, uh, all the initials are already correct. I can um, just continue with that. Now the question is whether actually I want to secure route, whether I want to go with the um, SSL communication or whether I can go without SSL. So if you go with uh, SSL, you need to either deploy your own certificate or the installation will generate the self-signed certificate. But um, so that's a, that's a recommended uh, option definitely for the production, for the POCs, you know, uh, in the dev environment, uh, you can also go without, uh, without secure routes. So just to make it simpler for me in this demo, I'll just go with no here. Okay, uh, I will skip the uh, busybox uh, image uh, for now uh, because I don't need uh, to validate uh, NFS and uh, Elasticsearch. And I will hit enter and enter uh, here because these are the questions which were already asked and also the question for installation of OI has been asked already and I decided no. Now again the question for the SMTP. So as you can see um, I'm being asked the same set of input parameters because this is the uh, interactive console and so that's why it's asking those questions. If I would go for the uh, uh, for this silent installation, uh, the questions uh, from the or my answers uh, from uh, from the validation are stored, and then installer is gonna use them in this silent mode. Um, okay, and now I need to specify the um, password for my uh, master admin. Master admin is the role who is really uh, owner of the uh, of the cluster and who has uh, you know the kind of like a god mode so who really has uh, access to everything and really this is the first user who enters the system so um, I will define my password forgot to use upper parameter. It's now asking me again. And now everything is okay and the installation has started. The installation itself will take a couple minutes uh, and uh, it, it, it might be depending on the, uh, you know, uh, on the local system. It could be half an hour, hour, you know, something uh, along these uh, along these lines. Okay, so after a while, um, the installation is done, and I will just go back uh, in the logs, the very beginning. So here, uh, this is where we left off, and now you can see that actually, um, uh, what were the all things which were happening in the in the meanwhile, and. and uh, we did the deployment of all of the uh, different uh, different services we uh, verified everything and so on so it's actually like a very long 
uh, log and the output, so I will not go through that. Um, but we should do basically now uh, two things. Uh, first of all, uh, we should check using this command, and our namespace is DXI. This. So now we can see actually all of these uh, services which we have deployed. And you can see actually that all of these services are up and running. The ones which uh, are supposed to be running because there are some initialization services which are not, no longer needed. So uh, everything uh, is up and running and uh, we can go ahead and actually use this address now in the browser and this will start uh, the tenant and now, now uh, let's go back to the, to the instructions here um, should use master admin as a tenant and as a user. So master admin here, master admin here, and my password, which I have selected. Again, there we go. Our brand new APM is installed and ready to be used. And here I'm in the new admin console and I can see the overview of the cluster. I can go to the services and see the uh, services and their health. I can create new APM instance and so on. But on this, um, we should discuss uh, at some point later. Thank you very much and have a nice day.